Here is a more complex example, again golf. It's very, very difficult to train this robot to play golf because you have to back drive it and it's not very practical to handle all these large, um, you know, these, these big robots, these large uh, links and, uh, and at the same time direct the ball. So there is a lot of friction and it's very uneven terrain. So before we were doing a lot of programming by good demonstration and we were trashing all these examples. But then we decided that we will keep these, good, these bad examples and have the robot again learn uh, how, to, how to achieve a good, uh, a good hitting speed. So what we are learning here is the speed at the target and the orientation. This is a very nonlinear also uh, solution. Depending on where you are, it's not the exact same speed and the exact same orientation that you should adopt. And so I'm not showing all the, all the, re, all the training here, but just a successful example where a robot has managed to learn very precise uh, speed pattern and orientation uh, to sink the ball uh, irrespective of where the goal is uh, on, on the state space. And these are again things that are very difficult for human, but, but robots are very good at controlling very precisely for speed and orientation. So we can exploit here the, the cleverness of the robot uh, and just use a human as a sort of a preliminary example, even if it's not successful. Now I'd like also to emphasize the fact that we like these robots to be very highly reactive. And that will be the last part of my speech. When I mean reactive, that really means this type of motion. It's like when you have a fraction of a second and you need to react because you don't want to stumble, you don't want to fall, you don't want to, if this glass is falling, you don't want it to fall before you catch it. So how can we get that? Uh, one thing also that I like to see, and this is part of it, is a robot that does this. This robot is meant to put that piece of sugar into that cup. That's his goal in life. It absolutely wants to go above the cup, and once it's there, then it drops the, the sugar into the cup. But now this person, this nasty person, is perturbing him all the time. What this person does is that it hits now different parts on the robot arm, which are endowed with tactile sensing, and the robot has a little reflex. Each time that you touch it, it moves away from the point of touch. And so that, that moves him away all the time from its original trajectory, its desired trajectory. But as you see, very naturally, it recovers. It continues its motion to go to the target. Now you don't have robots that do that nowadays. If you do that for most robots that you see, they stop and then they replan for about five seconds, 10 seconds, and then again they do a trajectory. And I like to see the smoothness, but the smoothness is not just about reacting immediately without recomputation. It's also the way it does it. It's the dynamics, which is completely implicit. And it resembles very much a human dynamics, the, the, the way that human motion are uh, done. And I think it's tremendously important because it allows us to better predict what the robot will do. We have an intuition as to where the robot is heading to. Um, we see, and it's just thanks to the profile, the implicit velocity profile, the implicit way of, in which it moves that, that allows us to, uh, to have an idea of where the robot wants to go. 